Today, we shine a light on the little guys of this world. Sure, we all get a kick out of the cute and the cuddly, but in the natural world, small can also be feisty. Like this guy right here. You've heard the saying, big things come in small packages. Well, you're looking at a dwarf crocodile, one of my favorite crocodiles. We're hanging out with Kyle in his beautiful greenhouse. And uh, we're gonna be learning a little bit about the osteolamus, or the bony throat, the dwarf crocodile today. But we're also gonna be catching one up that kind of snuck out of her uh, quarantine enclosure, huh? Yeah, yeah. Right. his new girlfriend uh, is on the loose, so we gotta wrangle her up and get her back in. Huh, great. <laughs> this should be fun. <laughs> A portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. Fantastic. So we're inside a shed, which you're using as a little bit of a quarantine for this mm -hmm. animal because everyone knows if you're going to introduce a new animal, and certainly Kyle likes to keep things biosecure. Just you want to, yeah, just a, just a little bit. You want to make sure that the uh, animal is healthy when you introduce it to another one. Uh, unfortunately for us, is she got out of the tub. All right. So luckily she's still in here, but we're just going to have to catch her. Now the thing that worries me is that even though at any time, you know, working with crocodiles, it's the little ones. It is. Yeah, the little ones that are the sketchiest, okay? And these are, I mean, these have so much jaw strength and they're so quick, you know, with their right. small size, it's, they're so dangerous. All right, so this will be my first. You really Here she go. We're gonna chase her out into the open. Get ready to go ahead and shut that door. I wanna get her in a better spot because. There's, uh, she ain't coming. She ain't coming. Alright, so I have to here. Some, here she is. Look at she's turned back. Don't move over there. Tom's over there. I'm just gonna go in here and see if I can get my hands handed to me because I'm in a bad spot. Oh okay, yeah, here she is. If she use that towel. I will. I just want to first get into a position where I think I can actually get. So we're gonna take the towel. Oh yeah. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> um, shucks. Uh, well, I lost my towel. <laughs> yeah, I need a pole, maybe, to get the towel. I need, well, this is why I didn't want to back, you never want to back an animal into a corner when its face, the pointy end is Come out. getting you. Come out. Uh, let's see, I got my fish. fish does. All right, I got my towel back. I got it. And she is Keep fast. going that way. Yeah. Yes. We're going to get her out to the open. Uh, she's backing herself into a corner. She knows there are other people here. Up. No, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good. This is awesome. See, this is what I'm talking about. This, these animals have a little bit of a Napoleonic complex. They're small, but man, are they feisty. And we got her cornered, so why don't you guys back away? I'm gonna try and chase her into more of an open area because there's just no way I can safely grab her. So if I do this. Yeah, every time she grabs that towel, she just shakes the heck out of it. Yeah. I wish I had. Let me try the towel. There you go. Keep her, keep her attention. And I'm trying to get. Yeah. All right. Hold it. I can't. Got it. Oh, hold on. I don't. Think <laughs> hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Just hang, hang on when you get her. I don't know if this is going to be good or not. She's going to, ready? Yeah. One, two. Right, let her struggle, let her struggle. I got her, I got her. She ain't, I got her. Good grief. Oh, she puts up a fight. She does. I'll tell you what, man. I had an easier time jumping those Niles. <laughs> Holy smokes, let's bring her out and I'll yeah. show you. Just, oh, oh, oh. I'll show you just how awesome this species is. Now that we got hands on her, let's go in the light. Yeah, let's do it. Alright, man. Holy smokes. Kyle, thanks for a little rush, man. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about the species. So this is the Osteolamus. It's the only animal in its genus. What's the, the specific name again? 
Uh, there's Tetraspis. Tetraspis, okay. And then there's also the Osburni as well. And All right. One other one. They're really breaking them up now into subspecies, but most of them in the United States are Tetraspis. All right. So they're named Osteolamus, and that means bony throat in Latin. And and I don't want to take my hands off her throat, but if you look down here, it is bony. Uh, their skin is really of little value as far as any kind of the leather trade or skin trade. So what's really happening with them in the wild where they're from in West Africa is it's bush meat, it's habitat loss. Uh, that's what's causing these animals to face, uh, you know, endangerment, uh, of course. Uh, the other thing that's cool about this species is it's a jungle or forest dwelling species of crocodile. And they fill the same niche that the dwarf uh, caiman in uh, South America, Phil, and that is these animals actually live in small pools, but then they build these really long caves mm -hmm. or burrows next to them. So the, but you, you've actually been to West Africa have, and seen yeah. these in the it's wild. It's amazing. I mean, I saw an adult Osteolamus in a puddle that was maybe four foot round, and that was its entire home, but it had a giant cave in a tree right next to it. Oh my gosh, that's so incredible. And so this guy is just a heavily armored beast because it's so small, so think about it. I'm not the biggest crocodile in the world, but I've got these incredible osteoderms on my back and on my bellies, okay, that really protect me. He's got the burrow, or she rather, would have a burrow. They like canopy, and they're very nocturnal. And much like other ambush crocodilian predators, they're gonna wait in those little pools for anything. They're opportunistic. They're gonna eat, you know, crustaceans, uh, fresh land crabs, snails, little reptiles, Yeah, they're mammals. very terrestrial, so they're always searching around at night. It's amazing how far they go from the water at night. Wow, that's incredible. A terrestrial crocodile. We're going back a few million years before we found anything else like that. Because mm -hmm. uh, they do, there were some former, oh, look at this is interesting too. Guys, I don't want you to get too close. But here's what's pretty amazing about the dentition. Their teeth at the base of their mouth, and I'm not gonna even think about putting my finger there unless I can secure her jaws. Hold on, I want you guys to see this. So I'm just gonna try and secure her jaws. All right, all right. So this is sketchy too because these are sharp right here. But if you guys look, okay, right here, they're more blunt, those teeth, and those are the crushers, man. Those teeth are going to crush snail bone uh, shell. They're going to crush small turtle shells. Um, and this is a full-size animal. It is. This is it's a breeding female. female. This female yep. will reproduce. It's incredible. So this is the world's smallest crocodile. Even though it's small, what did we learn? You never mess with the small guys because some of them have those Napoleonic complexes. And what's so cool, too, is about oh. them is look at the giant eyes they have. Yes. You know, for life in the dark, man. Mm -hmm. They live in those burrows. They walk around the jungle at night. If you guys at home ever get a chance, I don't suspect you might, but if you ever get a chance to feel the power in this body and the, just the, the hard right here, these scoots, these are some of the craziest nuchal scoots I've ever felt. Mm -hmm. This is one whole bony, free-floating bony uh, osteoderm. Now, osteoderms are free-floating bone in the skin of the animal. If you ever get a chance to be on one of these, you can feel, you'll never feel a more ossified nuchal scoot than these. Look at these, these totally protect the backbone. This is an armored dragon, man. Smaug. If I had skin like that, man, I would not worry about anything. So think about it, walking around in the, in the dark through thorns, prickers, vegetation, not a problem, dude. And when we talk about their skin being valuable, uh, certain species like saltwater crocs, American alligators, they have very little to no osteoderms in their bellies. And that's what they use to make leather. It's the belly skin. But this animal here, on its belly, oh, oh you can't, on its belly, it's actually pretty heavily osteo osteified. So that means that there's really not a lot of use for it. Except, fortunately for them, uh, the use is for them. That's what I think. Anyhow, guys, we are going to put this female back in her tub. We're going to have to dial the tub in so she can't get out again. I don't think Kyle wants to wrestle with her mm, a little. No. But this was awesome, man. What a cool episode. I love that Kyle lives so close by <laughs> because I get to get my crocodile fix. And this is certainly one of my favorite crocs. Dwarf crocodile. How sick. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, Kyle. I always appreciate coming over to hang out with you, bud. Join me live Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. I'll be hanging out in this Cam Kennan studio with some scaly friends and taking your questions. So join me Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern, live on YouTube. See you there.